Hi friends, welcome to Azure video tutorial. This session I am going to explain you about mapping data flow. In Azure Data Factory version 2, we have a new features available that is in pipeline. You will be getting additional flow called data flow. So what is exactly this data flow? In Azure, earlier uh, we need to develop any uh, ETL transformations like if you want to develop anything we need to write a code so you need to spend more time to designing your ETL logics so here they are providing in data flow GUI based wizard based step by step process you can load the data from source to target any source to any target in pipeline that data flow option is available in new version earlier it was available as a developer preview version now it is available full fledged version you can create data flows under we can reuse those data flows so i'm going to create a new pipeline here okay that if you go to move and transformations here you can find data flow here when you drag and drop it will ask two options use existing one or create a new one so i'm going to create a new one blob to adls data flow so i'm going to create this data flow mapping data flow is a wizard based loading data from my azure blob account to azure data lake let's finish this so here you will be getting a default if you click on this it will add a source with the source parameters you need to select the source source means i have a azure blob account there i have one file i'm giving one sample example to load the data from my azure blob account to azure data lake so this file i want to load from azure blob to azure data lake so i have a data lake which i have a target sales folder so i want to load the data from that location to this location so my source will be Azure Blob. So if you have already created data sets, you can use this. So I have already created data sets for both invoice source and a target. A target means my DLS source is my blob storage. So select your source. Still, if you want to see this data set parameters, you can click on this. This is my data set. And the connection information you can see is Azure Blob available in particular source location. That's a folder. There's a file. Okay. I'm going for single file. And there are other options here you can see. Allow schema drift. So if any changes in source, if any changes in source, like source feed, uh, column changes or adding new columns, if you select this default it will be considered and it will sync to your target and the data type default data type will be considered as string so that is called allow schema if you are selecting this then source options here you can see this is the complete source options like uh, number of files if you want to select from this path this is the star or you can use any parameters or variables and the partition root part if you have partition based same thing for list of all files if you want to process this you can select this and uh, column to store file so column based you can go for this and after completion of this if you want to move this data files like delete those files or moving to another location like archiving files you can use this move source to some archive location but I'm not deleting any file, simply I'm processing file. Then 
here there is a plus symbol in a data flow if you click on this you will be getting transformations that is if you have multiple sources you can use a giant condition and the splitting if you want to split the data from one file to multiple files that conditional split and and uh, there is exist and union set operator is available and lookup also is available and uh, there are other transformations related to schema like derived column select aggregation select key pivot and pivot and the window the whole transformation and the data level transformations like a filter short alter row and the final is your sync so a target uh, that naming convention here is a sync source will be same as source but here target they name it as sync click on this I'm not using any uh, transformations here I'm going to explain you simple example from single source to single target later I will explain you all these transformations how to use is all the transformations okay let's start with the sample example so source details I have already given this is my source setting here you can see my file I have selected and if you want to skip any lines number of lines from your source file you can use a skip and there is another option they are providing sampling sampling means if you are running some if you are running huge data and if you don't want to load all the data you can use enable the sampling and enable the row count how many rows you want this is for skipping rows but this is for you don't know how many rows will be available right you cannot know using skip rows skip rows will only for a few records you can skip but here only I want to select only top 10 records or 100 records in my file that is called sampling so I am going to load the full table that's a full file that's called sampling option available go to sync that's a target and if you want to change this name so I will change this name as target ADLS and this is my source source blob okay then select your data set my data set is invoice target if you want to see this you can click on edit and here you can see this is my data leg and you can check the connections whatever uh, link services have created and uh, file path is this one then same here hello schema left and uh, if you go to settings there are some other options so while creating a target file so this is source file right this source options related to after a processing file if you want to delete that file or if you want to move that file to some marker location you can do this all this and here is target means while creating a file if you want to clean the folder like if you have existing files if you want to clean that you can clean you can select this option and file name option a default it will be created as a partition like part file and uh, there are some other options you can see as a data and column output as a single file if if you give any name it will be created as a single name and uh, there is other option called code all so if you select this all text will be displayed as a code here you can see enclosed all values with the codes so I'm going to save a single file sales dot CSV so this is the way I'm going to load the data from that source to target with the wizard based completely wizard based I'm not writing any code it will completely GUI based so you can publish this then you can go to your pipeline and validate so there's no errors there's an option called you can debug you can enable this data flow debug on the runtime integration I'm selecting that then so currently I, there's no files one if I run that so I'm going to trigger this so I'm running this 
pipeline and here you can see this status this pipeline and it is in progress and actions here you can see the JSON action okay and here you can see the view active debug sessions any sessions are running this is my pipeline and this is my session ID so this is running then you can go to here you can refresh it will take a few more uh, minutes because I'm using a trial version so that capacity and everything will be less here you can refresh if it is done you can see the status has succeeded and the other options here you can see this run ID and the actions you can verify here also so it is taking more time to debug all this let's see here running your pipeline a minute ago this all the alerts you can see Still, it is in data flow debug is going on. My session also is running. So first time when we are doing a debug, it will uh, automatically it will like take more time to validate all source and target objects and data, whatever data sets and link services. And that too, I'm using a trial version. So obviously, you can expect we'll wait a few more minutes and if you want to stop this job again there is options here here you can say cancel options and uh, there is a trigger trigger is a scheduling where if you want to schedule this daily if you click on this you can create a new trigger all triggers will be available in this trigger okay there's a tab here triggers and connections or whatever you have a source and targets that's a link services it's taking more time So this data flow is available now for uh, use earlier it was a uh, developer preview so if you are not using data flow so you can go for copy data and other transformations here you can see so copy data is same as your uh, data flow but uh, you have to copy both the source and targets there okay and other transformations you have to use manually so this is all the other manual transformations here you can see look up variable validation store procedure weight web and this azure functions which is they are providing right god it's taking more time does this So now here you can see the cluster is ready. Now it will start running because when we enable this debug now, it will take more time initially. 
let's see this. It should take less time now because this yeah now here you can see it is changed now actions source and target so once this is available as a green now the job is running yeah see this the file has been created whatever we have a given file See complete data. So if you don't want to use here as a default, okay. I'm saving this, I'm publishing this. I'm not using any name, means system will assign a name, will validate. still yeah previous job succeeded now I can run it again with the new changes so it's going to run I think now it will take very less time because it's already seconds 20 seconds see the part file has been created so earlier initially when we develop this when we need to enable this data flow debug so it will validate all the source and targets then after that it is ready for execution now I have executed now you can go for creating a trigger so you can trigger now or you can create a new trigger and you can select that schedule timing daily and you can select the end date and every month every week every day like this you can go for create a schedule so I will show later this so like this we can go for using data flow in Azure Data Factory so earlier it is not available for so now it is available you can start using this data flow instead of creating manually all this source and targets so directly it will be used without code this is called data flow so all data flows will be available here whatever you have created and the pipelines and data sets so this is the way we can go for creating data flows in Azure Data Factory version 2. So thank you for watching my videos. Please subscribe my channel to get more videos and updates on my channel. Thank you very much.